for everyone present here and those watching online. Jesus, speak to everyone. Our lives will not remain the same again. Let burdens be shattered. Let weights be rolled away. Let a heaviness be destroyed. Confusion become a thing of the past. Bring us in the place of understanding. We vow to return all the glory back to you. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have just prayed. Now, before you take your seat, I'd like you to turn with me to the book of Amos. Amos chapter 4, I'd like to read verse 11 and 12. Amos chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Amos chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. And the Bible speaking, can you pick your Bibles in case the screen is not showing for it? said, I have overthrown some of you. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the boiling. Yet have you not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Verse 12. Therefore, thus, for this will I do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God. Please be seated this morning. And put those hands together for Jesus if you came. If you are here this morning, put those hands together for the King of Glory. Is that the loudest you can do? Someone who's excited, forget about your friend. I said, give it to God this morning. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I'd like to welcome everyone to church this morning. Those of us on site and those of you online you're welcome and welcome welcome real good glory to god this is the last sunday service in the month of march and i'll be bringing us god's word which i've captioned here as the prepared vessel what do i call it the prepared vessel prepared vessel i like to start by saying this word revival it's not meant for everybody. Revival was originally programmed to affect the prepared or to affect the prepared vessel. Revival cannot affect everybody. No. Revival was programmed. Revival had been orchestrated by heaven to affect the prepared. Can somebody say the prepared? What is revival? Revival simply means the arrival of God in the midst of his people. When God comes into the affairs of a man, what happens next is revival. When God steps into a place, now the Bible speaking said, God standed in the congregation of the mighty. So whenever God steps into any congregation, revival takes place. That little congregation becomes a mighty congregation. When God steps into the life of a people, it doesn't matter how they were before, but because of the arrival of the presence of God in their life, great and mighty things will begin to happen. No wonder in Isaiah chapter 60, in verse 22, the Bible says, For a little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a great nation. He said, I, the Lord, will hasten it. I will hasten to bring it to pass. I pray for someone this morning. It doesn't matter how small you were before you came to service this morning. But you are living here a different person. Because your encounter with God on this mountain will turn things around for the better. I say your encounter with God on this mountain will turn things for you for the better. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, can you show this morning? Very strong word there. Revival was not meant to affect everybody, but it has been orchestrated, organized to meet the prepared. The prepared. When I said prepared, what do I mean by the word prepared? To prepare simply means to make ready. When you say prepared, I'm prepared, you are simply saying I am ready. Is that true? Prepared means to make ready beforehand for some purpose. 
use or activity to make ready you are preparing something for something now hear me hear me hear me the church believers have gone to a point whereby they thought that it's just everything falls back in the place of prayer we've had people sang song prayer is a key prayer is a master key jesus started in prayers and ended with prayers prayer is a master key yes prayer is one of the keys prayer is not the ultimate prayer is not everything because there's a place of prayer or there's a place for prayer and there's a place for wisdom you heard me this morning so many in the church are busy just praying shaking their head but they don't sit down to think the reason why God gave you the brain is so that you can think in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 he said come let's reason together so even God reason God is inviting you into a reasoning conference come let's reason together I know you are so disturbed I know you are so worried you are asking why he said that things are not working he said no matter how bad it is in verse 19 of Isaiah 1 he said if you be willing and obedient what happened he said you shall eat the good of the land but eating the good of the land is, is, is a function of you coming I want you to come so that we prepare let's look at it also the word prepare simply means to put in a proper state of mind prepare put yourself in a proper state of mind to prepare means to arrange to prepare means to calculate you want to build a house he said which of you that have a dream a vision to build a sky a skyscraper that will not first of all sit down to do what to calculate to prepare to see whether what you have is enough to finish or else when you start you get to a point that you won't be able to finish and people passing by will begin to laugh you and God does not want people to laugh at you that is why he's inviting you come let's reason together not because every lady all the women your friends are getting married then you two said I want to get married no are you prepared for marriage it's not a thing you go in for one day it's a thing for life but they prepare for it your mind state everything should be prepared that is why they ask you do you take this man as your lawful wedded husband to be with him you say yes I do glory to God they don't just say it you prepare yourself you position yourself you compose yourself it's a mind state on its own glory to God as a man thinketh in his heart so is it it means to organize to prepare it means to plan it means to strategize it has been said that if you fail to plan you have planned to fail no matter what you want to achieve in life it is expected that you embrace the place of preparation and that is one thing that is lacking in this part of the world in africa in africa we prefer the 11 the nine minutes you see a sport is coming up a world sport olympic also coming up for instance by next year for instance i'm giving an example other countries some five years ago they started preparing they've gone to camp camping their athletes spending money on them so that they can bring out the best world best athlete but in africa the leadership no some myopic leaders will wait until it's six months to the program and they start fire brigade approach and when you start asking them how are the athletes and you hear the spokesman will say they are all in top spirit can somebody say top spirit we can tell whether they are in top spirit when the competition starts glory to god preparation that's a key word now look at it we've looked at the word prepared now in second timothy chapter 2 second timothy 2 verse 20 and 21 the bible said but in a great house second timothy chapter 2 verse 20 but in a great house there are not only vessels look at the word vessels remember we're looking at prepared vessels they are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of earth so from verse 1 here we can see here that we have how many vessels types of vessels four the first one here it talks about the vessel of gold and of silver it went further it talks about wood and of earth then it says and some to honor 
and some to dishonor. But I have a word for someone this morning here. God had created you right from the foundation of the world to be a vessel unto honor. You heard me this morning. He says, some vessels are unto honor and some are to dishonor. He said, if a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctify and meet. The word meet there means also prepared. Meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. You see, preparation, what preparation does is that it positions you to be fit into things. It positions you to be qualified. Preparation qualifies you. A student who is not studious, who is not reading. On the day of the exam, you can tell. Is that true? How do you know that the student is not prepared? When you start looking at him, looking left, right, center, looking up to the ceiling. Others head down, they are writing. Dark skin, they are praying. But you find somebody who is looking up, looking back, chewing his pen. You know that he, didn't, he was not set for that exam. But someone who is set, you just see him flowing. Because everything he read or she read is what came out in the exam. And you see the mind engaging the mind, writing. Glory to God. I say glory to God. In a great house, there are not only vessels of gold or silver, but also of wood and of earth. Also of wood and of earth. Some of these vessels are to honor and some to dishonor. You see, there are, there are what we call vessels of rot. I will call rat, W R A T H, vessels of rat. That is vessels that lead to destruction. People who have walked against the commandment of God, people who have gone against the will of God. What happened? The wrath of God comes upon them. So it's been said that these people, they are the vessels of wrath, and also there are vessels of mercy. Tonight or this morning, I beg your pardon. Someone will enjoy the mercy of God here. So there are vessels that have been positioned for destruction. Whereas there are vessels that have been positioned to receive mercy. And we have mercy upon whom we have mercy. And we have compassion upon whom we have compassion. He said the race is not meant for the swift. The battle is not meant for the strong. But time and chance happen to them all. I can sense that the mercy of God is in this house this morning here. Someone came in here and were asking God in your heart. Lord, show me mercy. The mercy of God is speaking to you right now. I said the mercy of God is speaking to you right now. You see, when we also talk about vessel, we have looked at the word prepared. Let's also look at the word vessel. A vessel talks about an instrument. A vessel talks about a container. A vessel talks about a carrier. Something that contains things. That is a vessel. Are you with me? You, con you put something somewhere is a vessel that contains something. The flower pot right there is a vessel that contains the flower. Is that true? So, like I said to you, there are vessels of wrath and there are vessels of destruction. But the value of a vessel is in its preparedness. Write it down. Write it down. The value of any vessel is in its preparedness. Can you write it down? You heard what I've said. The value of any vessel is where? In its preparedness. Now look at this. Same vessels but different value. It can be the same vessel but different value. If you look at this vessel on the altar there, it is very clear that they took time to prepare it. Is that true? They took time. Somebody who does not mind the place of timing may produce the same vessel but not the same quality. Same vessel but different value. So everything falls back to value. In a great house, there are different vessels but not the same value. Some vessels are for honor. Some vessels are for what? Dishonor. But everyone that prepared himself, can you see? It falls back to the place of preparation. Some to honor, some to dishonor. Look at verse 21 here. Can we have verse 21? If a man therefore pour 
watch himself from this. He shall be. Can you sit down? He shall be. So it's not just prayer. After praying, there are things you do. There are do's and there are don'ts. A man purge himself from this. He shall be a vessel of a honor. He shall be a vessel unto honor. Sanctify. And meet. What meet also there means fit. 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 For the master's use and prepare unto every good work. There are people who have prepared themselves and their level of preparedness or preparation had qualified them. When you see the word, it says fit unto every good work. It says qualify. Now look at it. There's a level you prepared yourself to go out to face the world system that they can't see grace in you. They may say no to others, but they can't say no to you. And even if they try to say no, they will be fighting among themselves, saying, look, this person has what we are looking for. You may not even be aware that they are even fighting among themselves. The boards are fighting. Five of them needs to make decisions. But it's going to three may stand by you. Three will say, this person has what we are looking for. Because you have been prepared. You are fit. Can somebody say fit? On this mountain, grace is coming upon you. That will cause you to be fit. Grace that will qualify you. So that you become a vessel unto honor. You see, it is honor that makes people to like you. Some things you will be doing right now to live a good life, to live a righteous life, may look as if you are wasting time. No! You are simply preparing yourself. Glory to God. Preparing to become a vessel unto honor. Not only that, fit for the master's use. Like I said, the word of value um, or the word of a vessel is in her preparedness. Is that true? Same vessel but different value. Same vessel. You can be in the same company. You can be in the same house. You can be doing the same job. But you are getting different results. I pray for you today that you begin to experience different results. Are you saying amen this morning here? The value of a vessel is in preparedness like I said. Same vessels, different value. And just like it's been said, that the worth of a thing is in its value. The word of a thing is in what? It's in its value. How many of you know that, the, for instance, vehicles can be called vehicles, but they have different value. Any vehicle you see on the road, okay, most vehicles, I won't just say any vehicle. They park on the road and put something on top. What is the meaning? Do they write the price here? Because they are not sure. So you go there and they tell you, they say 350 for the car. And you start negotiating. You can even price 60,000. There's somebody who wants to drive a car. You price 60,000. And they say, no, last. It's a 300 or 280. You are negotiating. But there are some kind of cars you don't negotiate. You go into the car stand as soon as you enter. The price is there. You see a car parked somewhere. They wrote 32 million. Will you say, excuse me? You see, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fine Christian. I'm a fine Christian. I don't look for people's trouble. I saw 32 million. Is that the last price? They say, yes, that's the last price. What of 2.5 million? They will stone you from that place. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the price of a thing is in its value. You can see the, the value is here. Likewise, I'd like you to understand that there is a price tag on your life that no man can pay here. You are a creature of value. You have value. You have what? That is why I need to I also speak to the young ladies here. Hear me. Hear me. The Bible says, remember thy God in the days of thy youth when the evil days have not yet come. You find quite a lot of ladies today trying to live life in quote. By the time you useless yourself at this phase of your life, there's a season that is coming forth that no one will look at your face. Prepare yourself now for what you are expecting. Prepare yourself. 
any man who is not ready for marriage in case you are ready for marriage and the man is not ready tell him no it's not you're not the kind of person i'm looking for i'm a vessel unto honor esther lost her parents she was staying with her uncle Mordecai, and they were in a strange land and somehow the king gave instruction they should look for young ladies those hebrew ladies and so they can you know prepare them for the king to meet with them you want to choose to get a wife guess what happened it took them 12 months the first six months there were some kind of creams there's some kind of oil they gave to them they gave them people that will serve them they are just to be rubbing the cream prepare themselves the second six months also exactly 12 months it was time for them to appear before the king other ladies went in the king would look at them size them but when it was the time of esther as soon as she went in what happened the king preferred her i see god causing men to prefer you prefer you than others but it didn't happen just like that there's a place of preparation preparation will affect your mind will affect the way you think somebody who is prepared even in the mind to, for, for marriage amen everything outside will show but if you're not prepared for it you just want to jump into it the same way you jump in you may jump out but that will not be your story this morning here in the mighty name of Jesus now look at it there is new oil that God is bringing forth there's a new grace that is in the atmosphere but this grace this new grace is looking for new vessels in Mark chapter 2 Mark 2 verse 22 he said, and no man put new wine into old bottles, else the new wine does burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred or destroyed. But new wine must be put into where? New wine must be put into where? Into new bottles, or we break it down into new vessels. Remember, you are a vessel unto honor. So, new wine new blessings favor must locate new bottles new vessels new favor cannot go into wrong vessels no new favor will not be, be attracted into new vessels may favor begin to locate you your life begin to attract blessings in the mighty name of jesus i was talking about value also value simply talks about importance value means what talk to me this morning value means importance it means worth the worth of a thing for instance in john 3 16 the bible said for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him what happened shall not perish but have eternal life God so loved, God so valued the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever now the whosoever here brings you and I to the place of choosing what vessel we want to become yes you may be a sinner yesterday but today anything can happen are you with me this morning that is why you don't be the judge judging people everywhere you are not meant to be a judge you find some christians they use their mouth to castigate to crucify and to tell who is going to heaven and who is going to go to hell no you are not qualified to do that because the ways of god they are past finding out somebody who used to be a prostitute last week by today sunday morning that person will become a saint a saint and you find some of us who have been in the church for too long because we want to show that we do know we've ended up only playing religion please i like you to understand christianity and religion they are two different things religion makes you you assume that you know god that that's religion you assume you're not even sure you just look like god you dress like god people you wore suit put tie they say cover your head don't open we don't know that is that is religion but we are, we are talking about what reality christianity is more than religion christianity is a movement can someone say it's a movement in isaiah chapter 60 in verse 8 the bible says, who are these that flies as a cloud and as a dove to their window who are these who are these who are these 
God cannot step into a place and things will not change. Who are these? You become who are these? Jesus in the Gospel of Mark in chapter 6, the Bible made us understand when he went back to his hometown from verse 2, the Bible says he entered the synagogue and he began to minister and the people were amazed and they said from whence at this man this thing, is this not the son of Joseph the carpenter, is his mother Mary and his brothers and sisters are they not here with us and the Bible says what happened, he says that they were what, astonished they were astonished upon you. And I'd like you to understand there's a difference between the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of foolishness. When the spirit of wisdom is at work upon a person or a people, you can see them advancing. Even if result is not coming forth, they are focused. But when the spirit of foolishness is at work, you discover that you begin to destroy things. And you are blaming everybody for your failure. You blame everybody for your failure. Praise the Lord. It's been said when you correct the wise, the wise will be so excited. Correct the fool, they will fight you. There are people you can't correct. Out of love, you're trying to correct them, they pick offense. So you can tell who is wise and who is foolish. Because every wise man you are correcting, he will appreciate you. Are you with me this morning here? But the foolish man or a foolish woman will pick offense. Am I the only person you saw here? You didn't talk to this, you didn't talk. No, those ones are wise. You, you are foolish. Praise the Lord. And a fool have said in his heart that there is no God. How do I know that you are a fool? When you are doubting God. When there is doubt and unbelief in you. It shows that you are a fool. Because a fool have said in his heart that what? That there is no God. You don't need to say it in your mouth. Even in your heart. It brings you into the family of fools. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. In Isaiah 43. Look at verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Studio, he said, But now, thus saith the Lord, that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed. Look at the word redeem. To redeem means to bring back. Is that true? Bring you back to the original state. I have redeemed you. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art what? Mine. Look at your neighbor to the face. Say you are God's property. Look at your neighbor and say you are God's property. He said, I have redeemed you and thou art mine. You are my property. I have redeemed you. Look at verse 2. Can we read together one to go? When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they sh- can we read together? They shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, Thou shall not be born, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. But look at verse 3. Verse 3, studio. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy sake. Stop there. For your sake, I will give nation. I will kill people for your sake. That's to tell how the value, the words that you have. Thy sake. For thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Verse 4. Verse 4, studio. Since thou was useless in my sight, you are good for nothing. Who is speaking here? This is the word of God. And he didn't call anybody's name. He's talking to you. If this is what you get in this service today, let it walk in you. God say you are precious. So if nobody tells you well done, you tell yourself well done. Glory to God. If nobody is praising you, you praise yourself too. You have been waiting for people to say well done and you are picking offense, squeezing your face. I've been working in this company. I've been working in this office. Nobody is even celebrating me. Celebrate yourself. Glory to God. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. So you don't need to join politics to be a honorable. Am I talking to honorable here? And your own is not four, four years honorable. Your own is everlasting. Thou has been honorable. And I have loved thee. If nobody say I love you, somebody already told, I mean, has already told you. He said, and I have loved thee. Therefore, will I give men for thee and people for thy life. There are 
are people who are plotting to kill you. They say they say you went for tests. They say it's a poison you took. The Bible says you shall drink poison. Amen. You shall not hurt them. Glory to God. Is it not the poison you know that they said that, that you know that it's poison? You know how many things some of us were have eaten? And rather we are just adding weight. Glory to God. They say we should die. They say you match something, your legs will. You know how many things we, we have been matching? They pour oil, pour water. The concussion. They speak something, pour in your business center. And you came ignorantly in the morning. You stood there for some time. And nothing happened to you. Because the Bible said, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, thou shalt condemn. Glory to God. As the journey from one nation to the other, he suffered no man to do them evil. He reproved kings for their sake. He said, touch not my anointed. I don't know whether you know who you are, but you are God's property. He said, you are precious. You are honorable in his sight. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. My people no harm. That is how important you are. I know you have expectation. But you see, when preparation meets with expectation, a miracle is born. You can't be expecting something without prepare, preparing for it. When preparation meets with expectation, what happened? A miracle, a miracle. In Second Chronicles 27 verse 6, the Bible says, So Jotham became mighty. Why? Because he prepared his ways. Can we read together? One, two, go. Can we read together, church? Look to the screen and read one, two, go. Can you see it now? You can't be saying you want to become mighty and there's no preparation. There's nothing. You want to go for an interview and you are not prepared. And you appear before them. They say, what is your name? You say, you mean my son name? You show how stupid you are. You went in the same nest, you went, walk, walked in, and you're already shivering. They've not asked you any question. You show that you're not prepared. But someone who is prepared, he just walked in and he's smiling. Ready to answer any question. So, Jotam became mighty because, so to become mighty has a price. Because he prepared his ways. Before the Lord is God, he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. Two brothers, James and John, came with their mother to meet Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. And they said to Jesus, He said, I want one of my sons to sit by my left, by your left hand side, and you don't want to sit by your right hand side. Mark 10, from verse 35 to verse 40. Can we have it? Mark 10, 35 to 40. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, they came unto him, saying, Master, we would, we would, we desire that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. Next verse. And he said unto them, What will you that I shall do for you? Can we proceed, please? And they said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. That is, I want to become minister of finance. My brother will become the minister of defense. Out of 12 apostles, two brothers are in that cabinet. And they are not yet satisfied. They were not looking for a choice position. You see, politics is that today. You see it. Two disciples. And Jesus said unto them, You know not what you ask. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of? And the baptism. With the baptism. And be baptized, please. With the baptism that I'm baptized with. There is a cup of suffering. There's a baptism of labor. There are things you will need to go through. He said, when you go through rivers, you go through fire. Are you ready to go through fire? Even if things are not working, will you see profess my name? Will you say Jesus is still Lord? That is what he was asking them. Next verse. And they said unto him, very straightforward, we can. And Jesus said unto them, you shall indeed drink of the cup 
that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with God, shall ye be baptized. For look at verse 40. But to sit on my right hand, here you've not traveled anywhere, but start preparing your mind. Prepare yourself. Say to yourself, I'm not a local champion. The way you're talking shows, are you still local? Say, I'm not a local champion. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. It shall be given to who? To them or to who is prepared for. So there are some things that have been prepared waiting for you. Some things. You see, preparation brings you into maturity. Even in the place of marriage. If you're not mature, you enter into marriage as a baby. Everything you'll be calling your mother. The man is talking to you. The next thing you enter the toilet to carry your phone. Mommy, you were shouting at me last night. I didn't do anything, no. Shut up. Glory to God. Even a man, not to, not to ladies, even to some men. Some men still report to their mom. So shall a man leave his father and his mother? There should be a detachment and cleave to his wife and the two of them shall become one. There should be a detachment. You detach away from it. That's a sign of maturity. There are people you don't hear talk anything. Does not mean that they are not going through issues. But it's a sign of maturity. Glory to God. They want a thing to work. And they say, the devil, you have missed it. This marriage will work. This home will work. This home will become an epitome of family life that people will begin to look at us. They want to imitate. They want to emulate. They want to be like us. Everything falls back in the place of preparation. Now, you can't get a good marriage when you have not read any book on marriage. Please hear me. Hear me. Read. Why do you need to read? Read so that you can avoid the mistakes of others. Because most people who wrote books on marriage, for instance, five keys to successful marriage, 15 keys to good relationship, they wrote them out of their own experience. So when you now come and start reading, as you are getting the point, you say, oh, I see, I see. Have you heard women who said, it's a man, I'm a woman, we're all human beings. After all, I'm a graduate. He can't be talking to me like this. My father can't talk to me. Come on. For the home to work, the two need to work together. And you prepare before you come into it. These are two different human beings coming to stay under the same roof. So one of the things that will help you is preparation. You prepare yourself. Prepare. Because there are some storms you are going to see. Forget about all the things that the pastor told you on your wedding day. Say so marriage is honorable. Amen. He told you, yes, there are some things that, that you have not been told. By the time you leave church, that same day the man will just show you one side. And you say, ah, but we just left church. Say, and so what? You see how you behave in your father's house? Ah, it has started though. That is why he said, from where we read from our text, can we get to our text again? Chapter 4 verse 1. Amos 4 verse 1. He said, I have overthrown some of you. As God overthrew who? Sodom and Gomorrah. I love this part. And ye were as a firebrand. Look at the word were. That talks about past tense. You were as what? A firebrand plug out of the burning or out of the furnace. Sense of God as fire brown, but there is nothing, it's not showing in your life again. That's what God is saying. Some of you, your situation is worse than what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, Yet ye have not returned unto the Lord, or unto me, said the Lord. Therefore, cause will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare. To meet with who? Thy God. Prepare to meet. I am coming down with the power of revival. But revival was not meant for everybody. Revival was already programmed to meet 
the prepared. Revival can only affect the prepared. So everyone could be in church right now, but not everyone that can be taking what I'm saying, but those who been prepared, those who step in and said, Oh Lord, I am set for the world. Oh Lord, I'm, I came in here to bless. What happened? Things will begin to work for them. Those who came and said, I don't want to be distracted today in the service. I need a word. I want to get back home with the world. That is a prepared vessel. But someone who just came and said, today is Sunday. If I don't come, they will ask me, why, was, why, why were you not in church? No, you're not prepared. When you came in, you left all the friends who want to greet you and you sat down on your seat and you're preparing and you say, oh Lord, in this service, I'm set for a word. Give the servant of God a word. Let him talk about my case. Let him talk about my issues. And while you are there, as soon as the word is coming forth, you discover some things that you're prayed for when you didn't discuss with anybody will be coming forth from the altar. Because God has seen a prepared heart, a prepared vessel somewhere. And so the healing virtue of God begins to go towards you. The healing virtue, the word of God begins to look at you. Because I will do this thing. Prepare to meet with thy God. Said Lord, I'm here this morning. In Exodus 23 verse 20. Exodus 23 verse 20. God speaking and said, Behold, I sent an angel to go for thee, to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Hear me this morning? There's a place prepared for you. God has prepared a place, and this place is the amen for prepared vessel. Prepared place can only fit prepared vessel. If you are not prepared and they put you into a place, you will expose your foolishness. You didn't get me this morning. Check people who refuse to prepare themselves, who refuse to walk on themselves. They felt that because they have uncles, they have aunties. And so they took them and placed them in a position, gave them an office. They enter into the office, they expose their foolishness. To press computer is a problem. They don't even know they are left from right. Foolishness will be seen by all. Praise, praise the Lord. Because I will do this unto thee. Prepare. Because you want to change your status, start preparing. You want to be favored, start preparing. You want to be lifted, start preparing. You want to start seeing something good, start preparing. If I ask some question this moment right now, if you get, if, if somebody just called you and decided to give you five million right now and said, use this for business, you know that there are quite a lot of persons who don't have any idea, no plan, no plan. If you give them five million right now, they'll be confused. They'll be asking people, they just gave me five million, no. And I don't even know what to do. Can you please advise me? The same way that money came by accident. That indeed. So that when money comes, you look at your plans. You want to build a house. Don't wait until you have money. You can start getting the plans. Somebody, your father had an eight-bedroom, or a four-bedroom duplex. Get, you can build, get your own eight-bedroom plan. Amen. You have eight bedroom, you have three bedroom. So as soon as money comes, you look at what came and look at what you have the plan. It's the money you have on ground that determines what you start building. Are you with me this morning here? Start preparing. As I close this morning, in Proverbs chapter 16 verse 1, the Bible speaking said, the preparation of the hearts in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. What is this verse simply saying is that preparation is in man. That is to say you are responsible for preparation. God will never prepare for you. Nobody will ever come and prepare for you. No, you are the sole determining factor. The preparation of the heart is in man. Preparation is your responsibility. Write it down. Say preparation is my responsibility. Provision is God's responsibility. One more time. Say preparation is my responsibility. Provision is God's responsibility. So this is a very powerful scripture. 
It says, as long as you are prepared, as long as you are set, what happened? Provision will locate you. Preparation is your responsibility. Provision is his responsibility. So stop worrying yourself about the provision. Come down to the place of preparation. Most people who run to prayer houses, everywhere they say there's one man of God who can see. Yes, the man may see, but you, you are still blind. Because you can't see anything. You are just, you are just like a dog. Something you say, eh. You can't see. So why will you see now? Ask your neighbor, why will you start seeing? I say, ask your neighbor, you're looking at me. Turn and look at your neighbor and say, when will you start seeing? I said, you don't have eye. He says, he said, can, can the man see? Can see? See where? Where are you going to? When Jewel said prophetically, it shall come to pass in the last days. I pour out my spirit, Jewel 2, from verse 28. I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. Your old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see vision. Vision is men shall dream dreams. I will pour out my spirit. There's an, out, an outpouring of God's spirit. But this outpouring can unlocate prepared vessels. Because new wine can only fit into new bottles, new containers. And I pray that you are one of such vessels here this morning. There are some vessels meant to honor, some vessels to dishonor. You are a vessel to honor. People should see honor. Bring honor to the body of Christ. Bring honor to your generation. Vessels unto honor. So before you ask God for provision, ask yourself, have I prepared? God is not a waster. God will never waste his provision to give to a man or to a woman that is never prepared. Prepare yourself. Know what to do. What is the business you want to do? Once you have that answer, enter. Then you say, Lord, I'm set. I'm looking unto you for provision. I don't know where it's going to come from, but I look unto you, Lord, because I'm set right now. I know what to do. I'm not confused. Praise the Lord. Stop doing what everybody is doing. We are not called to do everything. Little money enter your hand. You heard that firewood business is what is happening. You enter one farm with pickup and you pack firewood and put in front of your house and turn that place to a zoo with firewood everywhere. Firewood can work for somebody. It may not work for you. Ask yourself, what am I called to do? Praise the Lord. Don't be a jack of all trade, master of none. There's something you are called to do. There's something that can fit you. There's a business you can do. And any business you are doing that you don't have joy, anything you are doing that has no joy, then there's a question mark in it. But there are some things you are doing and you are so excited. For instance, now if you take me to any oil company, I'll be frustrated there. You can take me to the rig, offshore, onshore, anywhere you take me to. You can put me inside a helicopter, drop me, I can use parachute to land on the place here. But when I look at the place, look at what they are doing there, I may not be fulfilled. You can even take me to one university and say from today you are the VC of this school. I will still not be fulfilled because that's not my calling. But once you give me a pulpit and you give me a Bible, I think the grace of God can flow. I've discovered my calling, what I'm called to do. I can't be rushing and say I'm going into politics. In fact, if my village comes that they want me to become chairman, that's the motion. Because what I'm doing right now is superior than any other job. Because once you're in power, they celebrate you, Your Excellency. The day your tenure is over, they turn their back against you. Jesus knew about it. They rushed. They wanted to make him king. And the Bible said Jesus fled. There are times you can run away. A whole Jesus fled. He ran away. Or else, his ministry will have ended. John the Baptist missed it. Why? Because his assignment was to prepare the way of Christ. Which he did. Jesus came. If John was sensitive, he would have said to Jesus, You know what? Now that I've finished my assignment, can I join you as one of your disciples? John will have been the first disciple of Jesus. He finished preaching the way of the Lord. Now there's no message to preach again. And now he's preaching on family life. Accusing the king and say, Herod, you took your brother's wife, which is wrong, and they arrested him. 
You see, when you are not in the place where God has sent you, the anointing of God cannot cover you too. In case you see Jonah, you can ask Jonah. They sent him to where? To Nineveh. He said, no way, I'm going to touch it. A fish swallowed him. He repented in the belly of the fish. And by the time he came back to go back to Nineveh, what happened? You can see the grace of an evangelist at work in him. The grace of God can only cover you when you are at the center of God's will concerning your life. You may not see results, but you have peace. There are some of you doing some business right now. The business may be small. Profit may not be coming, but you have peace. You can see that you are coordinated. You love what you are doing. But there are some that could just sit down and just start thinking. Thinking from one to the Why? Because they are in the wrong place. How can you be in an office where there is air conditioned and you are sweating? Something is wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is air condition blowing everywhere, but the man is still sweating. <laughs> He is from the village. He is from his village. But I see the mercy of God speaking for someone here this morning. I see grace for preparation being released upon your life. In the great name of Jesus. Now hear this as I close. How many of you know that ignorance is expensive than knowledge? Ignorance is more expensive than, than knowledge. Most people refuse to buy books. They refuse to read. They saw a book, they say, How much? They say 10,000. They say, Ah, it's so expensive. And that book has all the things that you need to bring you back to the place of honor. And you chose to follow the path of ignorance. By the time you calculate what it will take you to come out from that ignorance back to the place of wisdom or knowledge, you will spend fortune. So on this mountain, I curse every form of ignorance that the enemy has released upon the life of anyone here. I release the spirit of wisdom. Grace that will cause you to begin to prepare. Grace to embrace preparation. Let it come upon you right now by faith. I say comes upon you right now by faith. Comes upon you right now by faith. Comes upon you right now by faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. The first step of preparation is returning back to the Lord. Returning back to who? To the Lord. Because I will do this unto you. Prepare to meet thy God. Prepare. Return back to the Lord. Return back to your maker. Return back to purpose. Return back to the will of God. Stop pursuing shadows. Stop trying to look like every other person. You are special in your own class. You are unique. We don't have two of you sitting here. Everyone seated here watching anywhere. We are unique. You are in your class. I don't have your fingerprint. You don't have my fingerprint. We are so special. Stop desiring to be like some other persons. You find ladies today that they felt. They felt that one of the best things to, to get married is to go and put buttocks. Are you hearing me now? Is to put what? I mean, can you imagine to put buttocks? I saw one on the operation where they were doing the operation. The, the team backfired. And she was crying. <laughs> and the nurses were laughing at her. Do we bring bigger one for you? He said, no. They should remove it. They should remove it. Can you imagine? Which man, which reasonable man wants to look marry you because of Botox? Let's be sincere. Your brain is empty. You have big Botox. Wonderful. When you come to the house, we'll know that it's Botox. That will bring him money. No man wants to marry a liability. So before you put Botox, put something in your brain. Let it enter your brain first. Every man wants to marry a woman that is productive, that is resourceful, result oriented, not a liability. Praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody right now? Like you can prepare. No matter where you are, you can you can prepare. Prepare yourself for something big that God is bringing to pass. But the Lord grant you understanding. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Jotam became mighty. 
because he prepared his ways so every greatness you see today there was preparation yesterday no preparation today no greatness tomorrow stand to your feet this morning lift up your hands and just bless the king of glory can we bless the king of glory this morning celebrate him hallelujah lift up your hands and I appreciate let's magnify him this morning let's magnify him this morning I'm not a noise maker no I'm a vessel unto honor I'm a vessel unto honor I'm a vessel unto honor in the name of Jesus look at me I talked about the young men the young ladies but what about the young men young men hear me any job you do that gives you honor is very important you may have read petroleum whatever but there's no job look for something to do engage yourself to do anything they are building houses everywhere that you pay help at now three thousand four thousand five hundred three five look for something that you don't need special training to carry to be carrying blocks is there any special training no special training with all due respect when I finished secondary school, we just finished, I saw they were building a house somewhere. I went there and I started carrying blocks. I was carrying blocks. I've done all manner. I've helped medicine. I went to where they were painting, building, uh, how many story, a secretariat in the northern part of Nigeria. And that, just like joke, I walked in that place for eight months. Climbing scaffolds. I can, if I see a painter now painting, if it's not a good painter, I can tell. The way he's holding the brush. I was taught all those things. But that was not my destination. But you know what it means? As a young man, a young lady, you can go to do something that is bringing money into your head. It gives you honor. It shows that you are, that you are responsible. I've seen students who ventured into business. They are students, but they are doing business. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Believe God to direct your step and start preparing yourself into it. Prepare yourself to fit into what is coming forth. You want a husband? Prepare yourself so that when the husband comes, if you are not prepared, anything can appear. In fact, if you are prepared, when you see what you are looking for, you will know. You heard me? But if you are not prepared, anything that is passing, it look like it look like it. Maybe. Prepare to meet. Prepare to meet with thy God. Because I will do this. So revival can only happen to a prepared man or a prepared woman. Lift up those hands above your head again. Father, I receive grace for preparation grace to prepare I receive, can you go ahead and pray right now I receive you to the voice and speak out, speak out I receive grace for preparation I receive grace to plan are you praying right now everybody grace to plan grace to strategize I receive it Lord so I so end up becoming a person unto her I'm a vessel of honor. Shali bado si katani yada. E katene bado se sheka kita lo brad yada. Kashima na ya katene ba. Asuna ya katene ba de ke ima gato lo brada. Kando lo bado se shi ya gato lo brada ya. E karaba da gada ya gata la brada. Are ki ya gato lo brada ya kato za sheke ima gata la brada. Rakata ya katene ba do si ya kano brada. Kata ya gata ya. E katene ba do si ya ta. I may be looking small. I may be in a small location right now. But Lord, I receive grace to prepare 
for something big, something heavier, something great that is coming for even after the service. I shall tell that place comes on me right now. It comes on me right now. Even in your prayers, it shows, it shows how desperate are you. Come and cry out this morning. Cry out this morning. I don't say shake her. I can't tell you what those yet are. Raka Taya Gatea. Maka Toto Toto Toa. Parika Taya Gatoa. Maka Taya Gatea. Kelemana. I say Ketelea. Azutaya Gatelebada. Rabado say shake a matata. Marabado. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at this. Do you, not, you need to live ready. Live ready. Live prepared. Because you can meet greatness any moment. There's a way you dress as a lady. You are going out that you can meet your husband. There's a way you dress. It's been said the way you dress is how they will address you. You can meet. You can meet with favor. You can meet with some personality. Even through your appearance. It matters. In the place where you walk, your appearance matters. People will like you because of the way you appear. They say you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So, as kings and princesses, there's a way that we should appear. Is that true? There's a way you appear, that you attract favor, you attract honor. It's in you. But your preparation will bring it out. Without you preparing, no, nobody will see you. So when preparation is missing, good things will pass you by. But no more. I said no more. I said no more. I said something. I said when preparation meets with expectation, a miracle is born. You can't be expecting something when you're not prepared. You're busy praying, oh God, I need a car. I need a car for business. And you don't know how to drive. If the car comes, what happens? You not start. So don't wait until the car comes. I had a testimony of a young man. They, were, they invited him to come to one of the churches, Pentecostal churches. He said, oh, this is your hallelujah church. So one day, he made up his mind to follow this guy. When he came to the church, as soon as they sat down, he said he looked around in the church. He saw that everybody were all happy. During praise, everybody were dancing, laughing. As the bishop was preaching, people were laughing. He was the only one not laughing, no. Because where he came from, they don't used to laugh there. So he looked around in his mind. He said, what are these people laughing for? So the bishop said, you will have a miracle car. Some of you get your miracle car by next week. He said, everybody say amen. He said, he was the only one that didn't say amen. He said, hard car. When you didn't buy, you will get car. So somehow, he heard the amen was still going on. Something told him to also say amen. So he now say, Amen. By the time he left the service, I did, they got back home. Somebody brought a key and said, I bought this car for you. Gave him the key. On a Saturday, on a Saturday, they brought the car key, gave him. <laughs> he now believed in what he heard on Sunday. Now he wanted to go back to that church with that car, but he doesn't know how to drive. He now met the person that invited him, his neighbor, they live very close. He said, you know what, are you going to church, Moses? He said, I will also go. He said, but uh, you drive this car now. You know how to drive. He said, so this guy drove the car. When they go to the church, they parked somewhere. And this guy happens to be an usher, or he, maybe in the choir. So he now came out of the car, gave him the key. He said, after service, we'll meet here where we park the car. Let me join them. He rushed in. So he stood by the car. He was just rolling the key. You know, when you have a new car, those of you who got car for the first time, you understand what I'm saying? He stood very close to the car. And one of the traffic team now came to him and said, Excuse me, sir, please don't be annoyed. Eh? Don't be annoyed, please. We need to, you can move this car to this place. He said he behaved as if he did here. <laughs> he turned his ear. And the guy came close to him. He said, Excuse me, sir. What I'm saying, sir, we don't park this way. Can you please move the car this direction? He said, Look left, he looked right. Nobody was looking at him. He asked him, Do you know how to drive? <laughs> So the, the car just came yesterday. I don't know. And this guy now helped him to move the car. He went in to give testimony for the first time. One week old in the church. 
he got his own miracle card. I don't know what you are believing God for, but I want to believe God with you that from now through Sunday, by this time next week, that testimony will be in your hands. That miracle falls in your hands. In the great name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Father, thank you for your word today. You brought us in here. You spoke to us. Let this word begin to find a place in the heart of everyone that believes. Turning things around for the better. In the great name of Jesus. You are here this morning. You know you're born again. Or you're watching anywhere across the globe. You want to meet with Jesus. Please indicate by raise of hands. You want to meet with Jesus. Just raise your hands. Let's see anyone here this morning. Now pray with me. Say Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I am a sinner. Wash me. Cleanse me with your blood. To serve the living God. Take my names. Out of the book of death. Write my names in the book of life. From today, I renounce Satan and all of his empty promises to serve the living God. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for the life of this precious ones this morning. We pray that the whole of sin, sickness be broken in their life. And we welcome you all into the families of believers. From today, whatever you lay your hands upon to do, you shall excel in Jesus' precious name. You just pray this present when you see you're not a child of God. Look for a Bible believing church close to you and identify yourself with them, and God will bless you real good. Put your hands together for Jesus. Let's be seated, everyone. Let's have a seat this morning. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I like us to honor the Lord with our substance this morning. No one can help the church, it's a privilege. Whatever you do is a privilege. God has placed you in such a position to be able to do something. And he can raise anybody today. He said, give, you shall be given back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together. Run in order, so shall men give back to your bosom. The same measure which you give out, the same thing that will come back to you. Say, God, love it, a cheerful giver. And also, let's be reminded, today is the last Sunday service. Hallelujah. Last Sunday service, we're here to give God all the glory to celebrate his, uh, his faithfulness. Those of you who are thanking God for what he has done in your life, this is your best month, your anniversary month, you want to celebrate the Lord. Let's all rise on our feet this morning. In case you are making transfer, hallelujah, with our cashless policy that is still on, we have the information on the screen. Please, you can do so. You're paying your tithe. You're offering those paying tithe. You come, can come out. You're free to come out. Or you're making a transfer online. Please do so. Those watching the YouTube, we also have the information here. God bless you real good. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. You have your tithe. You can walk out to the front. Come out to the front right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we want to thank you. We appreciate you for your faith. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for the life of your daughter. We decree and declare the mystery behind Titan. Speak on your behalf. In the great name of Jesus and those who are making transfer, present here and online, accept this seed from us today in the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Cast your seed rejoicingly. The offering, look at the seed, oh Father. This seed, they are blessed today. We remain as givers. None of these hands will go down. Thank you for accepting this from us today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.